Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm Jerich and today I don't really know what I'm looking at. So this is a rather old air rifle, or at least most of one, because as you can see it is missing its stock. Now it's unbranded and it is in very bad condition. Now this was given to me by a friend of mine named Ben. He messaged me saying he had an old air rifle he didn't want anymore and did I want it. So naturally I said yes straight away, albeit maybe a bit prematurely, because only after that did I then message him asking for some more details and his response was 177 brake barrel, spring powered, approximately 1 million years old, no stock, it does work, but old as which he assures me is a technical term, and I'll tell you what, he wasn't far wrong. Now whilst I'm not 100% sure, I suspect that this may be a BSA cadet, but I will explain that a bit more later on, uh, but for now, let's take a closer look. First of all, we'll get the elephant in the room out of the way and we'll start off by talking about the condition of this thing. Now for starters it's obviously missing the stock but this gun has not aged well. Now it's not only rusty on a lot of it, it has well established pitting which is quite significant in places. Now whilst a lot of this may well be down to age, I've seen used and owned guns that are about this kind of age and they're nothing like this condition wise. Now I've already mentioned that this gun is a spring piston brake barrel gun. It's in 177 calibre and it has a 37.5 centimetre or 14 and 3 quarter inch barrel. Now the barrel is rifled with what looks like quite a high twist rate. Now obviously without the stock I can't say how long the gun should be overall or how heavy it would have been but it seems like quite a small gun uh, maybe designed for a younger shooter. Now it feels quite well made. Uh, it's obviously from a time long before plastic parts were being used on air guns. It's got very traditional non-adjustable iron sights. There's a nice sturdy notch at the back and just a raised post at the front. Now looks like the sights are held in with dovetails. Uh, certainly the rear one is. The front one is harder to tell because of the rust and grime around it. Uh, for an old gun, especially one in this condition, the sights are in still quite good condition in that they're not bent, broken or missing, uh, which the sights on these old guns can be prone to. It has a very simple trigger, which is surprisingly thin. Now from the feel of the trigger and the lack of an actual trigger unit, uh, I can tell that it's a very basic trigger assembly. Um, I'm assuming there's just one spring inside and that the top of the trigger also acts as the sear. Just turning it over, I don't know how well you can see, there is just one spring in there. There are only very limited markings on the gun. There's a serial number on the left hand side of the trigger block, which is B51075. There is also another marking on the underside of the trigger block, which looks like either 1U or IU, it's quite hard to tell. Uh, it does seem strange that the gun has a serial number, but no maker's name or model number. Uh, but given the condition, I uh, wouldn't rule out the possibility that it used to be further markings which have now worn off over time. Now in, try in terms of trying to get a rough idea of how old this gun is, there are a number of factors which I can use as an indicator. Uh, the condition, the style of the sights and the lack of a scope rail tell me that this is quite an old gun. Uh, but not so old as to be tin plate and it does have a rifled barrel which would lead me to provisionally date it as being made maybe somewhere between 1930 and 1950. Now, as I said earlier, I have an unconfirmed suspicion that this might be a BSA cadet. Now, when I first got the gun, I had a quick look through the Blue Book of Air Guns to see if I could find anything that looked similar. Uh, but without the stock, I found it very difficult, uh, so that was to no avail. Now, I wasn't really sure where to look next. But the 
curve on the end of the trigger block here reminded me very much of a BSA air sporter. So I looked up some old BSA guns and lo and behold I came across a picture of a BSA cadet which I think looks very similar if not identical. Now I believe the cadet has a BSA logo stamped into the side of the stock but it did also have some markings on the top of the compression chamber around here somewhere. Uh, however those markings were only surface markings, they weren't stamped or engraved like the serial number so as I said earlier given the condition of this gun uh, there may well have been further markings which have worn away. Now as I said earlier I don't know the exact size and weight of this gun but it seems as if it would have been around that of the cadet and the cadet was aimed at younger shooters and BSA actually marketed it as a way of introducing youngsters to shooting hence the name cadet. Uh, I did then look up the serial number and if this serial number of B51075 is a BSA um, serial number it means that not only is this a cadet but one made between 1946 and 1949 uh, which therefore puts it within my initial time frame for dating the gun and the serial number is also in the correct place for the cadet. I did then look back back sorry the uh, blue book to see why I'd missed it first time round as you can see the cadet doesn't actually have a photo in the blue book. Whilst most of my reasoning for believing this to be a BSA cadet is largely circumstantial albeit quite compelling I have no definitive proof so if anyone has any information to confirm it or suggest anything else it could be uh, please let me know in the comments below. Now with regard to shooting this thing I've been told that it uh, does work now, I've had it for a few months now but I've never actually tried firing it but I couldn't in good conscience make a video about a gun without doing some shooting so I will give it a go. Now I'm not going to bother with an accuracy test as it would be pointless. Uh, without the stock even the most accurate air rifle in the world would perform badly as you wouldn't be able to hold it right but I can still do some test firing and maybe see what power it gets over the chronograph. Uh, because of the missing stock I'm not really sure where to hold it and I don't want to get my fingers caught in it or anything so I'm actually going to fire it remotely. So what I've done is attach the gun to two bits of wood with a jubilee clip at the back. At the front I couldn't find a jubilee clip small enough so that's just on with a cable tie and then that is going to be clamped into this um, portable workbench. Now I've used two different bits of wood instead of one so that it can still be cocked and I've actually cut out sections in the bottom so that the uh, action will still work and I can still cock it and then I've got a bit of string which I'm going to use to pull the trigger to fire it. For a target I've got one of these Gamo zombie targets set up and for pellets uh, on the assumption that this could at least be a BSA cadet I've got a vintage tin of BSA pylon number one pellets. Something is stopping this from cocking. Okay, slight technical difficulties there. Uh, the gun wasn't cocking as you saw. So what I have done is I've just taken this apart um, off the rig to have a look and it turns out it was actually nothing at all. When this cocks, it was stopping and it looks like you might have to depress the trigger slightly for it to cock in like that. Uh, I assume maybe the original stock uh, pushed the trigger back very slightly. Okay, so this is a loaded gun now, so I'm doing it very carefully. Okay, we are secure. Let's have a test fire. Okay. That seems to be alright. Nice clean hole in the zombie's face. So what I will do actually is set the chronograph up and see what kind of power I get from it. Granted it might not be the quickest gun to load and fire. First shot over the chronograph. 
408 feet per second, better than I thought it was going to do. Here I have my chronograph test sheet. Now I've already done all of my calculations. And over those 10 recorded shots, this gun had an average velocity of 444.46 feet per second, uh, with a spread of 105.3 feet per second. Now it's quite a large margin, but this gun probably hasn't been fired for a good number of years, uh, so I'm sure that a period of heavier use would help it to settle down and make it a bit more consistent. Those vintage BSA pylon number one pellets that we're using uh, are 8.2 grain, so using the average velocity of 444.46 feet per second that gives this gun a power output of 3.6 foot pounds. Now it's obviously not massive but maybe slightly more than I had been anticipating. Now I wasn't really sure what to do with this gun after the video uh, as it's not going to be cost effective to restore it. Uh, I thought I'd probably just chuck it in the back of the gun safe for the time being and then maybe end up harvesting it for parts at some point in the future. Uh, but you know what? Let's do that now so that I can pull it apart on camera uh, to show you inside it. Now in other videos where I've taken things apart I've always either done it before or at least researched how to do it. Um, that's not the case here though, I've never taken this apart but it looks like it should be nice and simple and I don't really need to worry about it going back together. So let me just grab some tools. So I've got a pin hammer, punches, screwdrivers and a rag. Now ordinarily I would use a special spring compression tool when taking part of a spring piston gun but as this gun has got such low power and seemingly very little uh, pre-compression I should be safe to do it without but I will wear gloves just for the first part. Now disassembly should be straightforward as the trigger block is separate and behind the compression chamber uh, so I don't have to worry about removing a trigger assembly in order to get the piston out or anything and the fact that it is back here see the dividing line there uh, I believe this pin is literally just through the trigger rather than through any kind of internal sleeve there so the gun should just unscrew it's holding it very tightly here to stop it flying apart So, a bit of pressure, but not too much. So, here is the trigger. Let's first look at that. And then just going to use a punch to knock out this pin. I was quite pleased at how easy it all came apart actually. I was expecting with it being that old and in that kind of condition that it might have all seized up. There goes that pin. And the trigger can come out. So I was right then that this here acts as the sear. And this was the Spring, you can see that it then went up into the hole in there and just pivoted on that pin. So next, looking at the main part of the gun, we've got the spring guide, then the main spring, very tight fit in here, main spring. And then just clean my hands. The piston is a tiny bit stuck, so I shall leave it out with a screwdriver, or at least try to. It doesn't want to come out. Oh, I'll tell you why. Because the cocking link is in the way. 
trying to, can't seem to get out. Okay, with the cocking link removed, I can then pull the piston out. See the piston seal on the end there. And then this part here, is what interacts with the sear there. And when you pull the trigger, it then releases this forward. So I've taken it apart very slightly further off camera and I have actually found just a couple more markings on it. On the underneath of the compression chamber here that was normally covered by the cocking link, there's another one of those 1U markings, I think it is a 1, not a U. And there is also what looks like maybe G90. If you turn it upside down it could be 06, I'm not sure. And on the barrel itself, I don't know how well you can see it's very faint. Looks like a something six, maybe one six, one five. It's very hard to tell. So a slightly unusual video today, but I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this rifle, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, this though is just the kind of video that I really enjoy making. Uh, as I love old guns and all the history and research that goes into finding out about them and then taking it apart. Now I wouldn't have been too bothered uh, if I hadn't actually been able to get it to fire, but as our zombie friend can attest to the fact that it does still work, uh, which was a nice touch, um, yes the power wasn't great, but this thing is so unloved that I can't think anyone's actually changed the spring before, so from a 70 odd year old gun uh, it wasn't actually too bad. So thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury and until next time, keep your arms in the air.